So, yesterday left my wife to the airport. Wife went to her village. I came back and now I'm officially a bachelor. Single. Single and ready to <laughs> single and ready to mingle. I know. That sounds really bad. Ah, sounds very evil, right? I mean, wife just went for a dad's funeral and here I'm talking about all this. Well, let me give you, uh, let me take you into a man's way of thinking, a man's brain, or how a guy thinks. I'm pretty sure 99.99% .99 of the men will not uh, share this, they will not say this. But uh, you know me, I'm uh, either extremely straightforward or shameless or I just blurt out what I have to say. Anyway, so, wife went away, I came back home and the first thing I bloody noticed was the whole house was a fucking mess. Mess is an understatement. I mean, uh, the thing is, wife used to always clean, my wifey, baby used to make a mess. That's how things used to run. Now my wife's way of cleaning is doing it fast, you know. She doesn't do it like, like very detailed. She's not like a craftsman, you know, who literally cleans to the point it shines and, you know, like I, I want you to watch the movie Ants on a Shrimp, okay? It's a documentary of this award-winning chef. I mean, to eat in his restaurant, you have to have a booking of six months to two years. I don't know if right now his restaurant is open. Obviously, it shouldn't be open. But there's a waiting period of six months to two years. And he's the most innovative, creative and amazing chef. I mean, when he picks up ingredients, he doesn't take anything that is packaged. He naturally manufactures them. Like, for example, when he opened a outlet in Japan, you know, imagine he had a very successful business, very, very successful world-renowned business, where there was a waiting list of six months to whatever, and he shuts it down. He just shuts it down one day. And then from Europe, he decides, okay, I'll open it in Japan. And to open it in Japan, what he does is he doesn't just go and open it up. He first goes to the forest to source out ingredients. Like he'll pick up a leaf, he'll check it out, he'll taste it. He will go check uh, the grass, he'll check a tree bark, he'll check a wild fruit, he'll, he'll pick up stuff that which is naturally in nature. He will not use any preservatives and sourcing out the original material, he will make the dish which has never been made before. And just to have like a spoonful, people pay, uh, I mean, you're talking of an arm and a leg. People pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. There is a, imagine there's a waiting list of six months to two years just to sit in his restaurant and you need to pay in advance. Okay, now that, now this guy, the chef, when he cleans his kitchen, now imagine a kitchen is a place which is, very dirty, very manky, a lot of grease. You know, when he cleans his kitchen, I got inspired by him and it has remained ever since. When he cleans the kitchen, he literally puts his face to the table where he's cutting and chopping meat and fish. He puts his face like this and there he will scrub. He scrubs it till he feels it's sparkling. The entire kitchen, huh? imagine the entire there's not a grease on the wall, on the fan, nothing. It has to be brand new. And if anything is making any noise or the knife is not sharp, they have to literally either make it like perfectly brand new or they'll purchase it brand new. It's that perfect. Now, obviously, I don't go around purchasing brand new knives and all that. But this is to give you an idea how 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 he takes his craft so seriously. So me, when I clean, I clean with that kind of passion. 
and that has inspired me. So when I clean, even if I clean the toilet, I clean the, it's with vinegar. So, you know, it kills off all the smell and the ants and this and that. Then I put bleach, then I put soap. I mean, I literally scrub with hot water and make sure the place is sparkling, you know. Hello. Wake up. No, 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 thank you. Yeah. So, always make sure that it's sparkling, it's amazing. And I'll tell you the, the satisfaction, the joy that I have got being able to do this is immense. I cannot describe it in words. And I'll seriously tell you, if you really love your work, if you're passionate about what you do, you should respect your tools. You should respect, like whether it's your laptop, whether it's your computer, whether it's your desktop, whether it's um, whatever it is, man. Put that kind of passion, put that kind of interest, put that kind of like, uh, you know, it should be a reflection of your soul. So when I clean, oh, I'll tell you, I, I might spend uh, an hour just cleaning and, you know, and I'll tell you, the, <laughs> this is ridiculous if I tell you this, but the whole house, the entire bloody house smells of either Clorex or bleach or vinegar. And it's so strong, there's not... Imagine, I'm in a forest. This lady drove so close to me. Fucking stupid or what? <laughs> Some of them don't know how to drive. Anyway, so... You know, imagine I stay in a forest. And until... That is, until I had my baby. Before that, there was not a single ant. Not a single ant in my house. After the baby came, there are, now there are ants. Because my baby has this habit of throwing food in corners and this and that. And then my wife, eh, she also doesn't clean. She doesn't, obviously I can't blame her, she has a kid. Uh, she has our kid, not she has her kid. Okay. So it's not possible to, so you, you can keep everything perfectly clean and next minute, you know, the baby has destroyed everything. So, but what I tend to do is I, where I can control, especially my room. I keep it this way. And now that I'm alone, now that I'm bachelor again, I'm going to keep my kitchen, oh, the way it is. You know, I'll tell you when, especially when you remove the utensils or you remove some corners, there's so much of grease and dust and dirt and, I mean, you begin to look at it like, ah, what is this? And especially, for example, you know, where you put your uh, spoons and knives, the holder. When you look down, there is that, I don't know, fungus or whatever. So what I do is I just, even, for example, even, uh, uh, you know, sauce bottles, ketchup bottles, you know, you get the sauce outside and it's sticky, the oil bottle. You know what I do? I close it tight and then I clean the outside with soap and this thing and uh, wipe it dry and it should be perfect, man. Uh, I know it's not possible, especially when having a kid and my wife doesn't share the same passion of cleaning like I do. But that's what I like. So, the first thing that I want to tell you is my passion for cleaning. Passion, like how these, uh, what, uh, you know, what is this? Uh, these, these coaches, you know, I'm a passionpreneur. <laughs> so I'm a passion cleaner. <laughs> But I'll tell you, uh, if you if you seriously put your heart and soul into cleaning and keeping things in order, like this Japanese way of, they have a minimalistic uh, theme, which I'm not a very big fan of. Um, at least I don't find it possible. Yes, you need to have what you need. But uh, keeping, don't have a clutter. There is so much of clutter I need to get rid of. Keeping things, what you need, that's important then keeping things in place is also very important. But most important out of all the three is keeping it perfectly clean. It should be so clean that you feel you're coming to a new place. You know, like imagine going to a five-star restaurant. It's like, wow. You know, so you should come to a house, you should come to a kitchen that should be wow. The problem of when you're married and when you have wife and kid, ah, ah. <laughs> you keep everything clean, you come the next minute, the baby has thrown actual, uh, thrown rice and food 
and soup and juice and uh, the toys and uh, and she has stomped all over it and walked all over and she has drawn on the walls and made a mess of the whole bloody place. Uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's drives me mad. So what I do is, my room, na, my office is out of limits. My baby can come in once a while, but stay out. And I'm very happy that my baby stays out. I know I might sound evil, but that's how it is. So, well, that is the first benefit, the first amazing benefit of being a single bachelor again. And I can tell you, I am so happy. I'm so happy that I'm single again. <laughs> oh, the joy. Oh, but the amount of cleaning that there is, is not a joke. The amount of cleaning that there is, is crazy. And I'll tell you, it's going to take me roughly, I think, at least two weeks. Two weeks of cleaning. You know, slow by slow by slow. Obviously, I have work to do. Uh, eight more days for the new year. So, my special offer thing. So, anyway, this is the first benefit. So, what I'm going to do is remove all the things that... Not the clothes that she's selling and all that. Remove all the extra stuff that I have. Bundle it up together. Sell it off or dump it in the bin. That's number one. Second one is keep everything nicely and clean. Whatever I can. Um, and uh, enjoy uh, being single. Hopefully for one month. I'm hoping one month. Oh, we're so happy. Ah. So anyway, this is the first benefit of not having a wife and baby. First benefit. So maybe I'll put another video and explain more benefits of not having a wife and baby. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me sign you off. Take care. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best.